Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul and in this Rick to Com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. This video really is going to be focusing on Raja Kadori leaving AMD. I've got a few messages on this subject, and that's putting it mildly, so I figure you're probably going to want me to talk about that, but we'll do that at the end of the video. Very quick piece of news at the start, however, and that concerns the PlayStation 5 and the next Xbox. The release of the next generation systems is, well, somewhat anticipated, but we don't exactly know the release date. Some are suspecting it could be as early as 2018, some are suspecting 2019, or perhaps even 2020. Well, according to Ubisoft, they suspect it's going to be, quote, a minimum of two years. And this was thanks to a recent investors call with the CEO of the company stating, and I quote, as Sony launched the PlayStation 4 Pro last year and Microsoft Xbox One X this year, we still have a minimum of two years in front of us before something new is coming. But that's our perception and we don't have any confidential information on that front. We really like the fact that Sony and Microsoft are putting a lot more power into their machines, using the evolution of technology to give power to our developers to create games, better games, excuse me, for our players. That is going in the right direction rather than trying to do accessories or other things. And this is going to help the industry a lot because games will be really beautiful on those machines, end quote. Couple of things. Firstly, he could be lying regarding not having any confidential information, but I highly doubt it. That tells us at the very least they don't have any indication of what the release dates will be. And while I suspect both Sony and Microsoft have a pretty firm understanding now what the specifications, or rather the target specifications, of their successors to their respective platforms are going to be. They probably are still somewhat tentative both upon the release window and probably as well exactly what they're hoping to achieve to those systems. Many are suspecting of course we're going to see the migration purely to cloud-based gaming and we know the PlayStation Now and even Microsoft are considering a similar service but with that said I don't think that that's going to happen quite yet. I don't think internet connections as a whole are fast enough, and I don't think the market as a whole is quite ready to make that leap. I also think that the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 both have a lot of room left in the tank. Okay, talking about the Xbox One, the vanilla console just for a second, it does suffer somewhat from games in terms of the actual raw aesthetics. Yes, it's behind the vanilla PS4 Pro, but still, it's holding its own, and still looks pretty damn good in most games. I mean, it still looks rather lovely. Rise of the Tomb Raider on the original Xbox One looks pretty damn fantastic, same as Gears of War 4. And with the release of the Xbox One X and the PlayStation 4 Pro, developers now have the ability to target across a different set of platforms. In other words, they have the option of making the games look amazing, but also making sure that they are able to appeal to a wider install base, and that's really what it comes down to. Once the PlayStation 5 and the successor to the Xbox One, let's just call it the Xbox 4, I don't know, let's just say the Xbox 4, when that's released, it's, unless they're backwards compatible, which I'm hoping they will be, and even if they were backwards compatible, you've got that delimination, a clear delimination between the old and the new generation, and I think while developers are still, well, kind of uncertain and microtransactions are now becoming more, um, well, just pretty much rife in the industry, and we're still kind of putting um, a, a lot of focus even on now, on today's games, and games are still looking pretty damn amazing. The Xbox One X titles look a stellar, and even the PlayStation 4 Pro games of the PS4 Pro have also only got better. And who knows just how amazing The Last of Us 2 is going to look for the sake of argument. Next, and possibly the most important piece of news today, and that is Raja Kadori. So first of all, I'm going to say that he has officially left AMD. Uh, there was actually a leaked memo which had actually cropped up. And I won't read all of it because it's, well, way too long. But he says that 40 is a significant number in history. It is a number representing transition, testing and change, and I have spent 40 days away from the office going through such a transition. It was an important time with my family and also offered me a rare space for reflection. During this time, I have come to an extremely dif uh, difficult conclusion that it's time for me to leave RTG and also AMD. 
I'll leave some of the other bits on screen, but I will continue to be an ardent fan, continues Raja, and user of AMD technologies for both personal and professional usage. Uh, as I mentioned, leaving AMD and RTG is an extremely difficult decision for me, but I felt it's the right one for me personally at this point. Time will tell. I will be following with great interest the progress you will make over the next several years. On a final note, I have asked a lot of you over the past two years, and you've always delivered. You've made me successful both personally and professionally, for which I thank you all from the bottom of my heart. I do have these final requests from you as I leave. One, stay focused on the roadmap. Two, deliver on your commitments. Three, continue the culture of passion, persistence, and play. Four, make AMD proud. And the final one, make me proud. And then obviously he just signs off. Now, it's a bit difficult to know how this works. Some people, of course, are saying that he was ousted from AMD. Others are saying that he's leaving of his own accord, and I'm much more inclined to believe the latter. Firstly, Vega, to be honest, was not Rajar's doing. Really, his doing is Navi. There is another question, and unfortunately only AMD themselves can argue, uh, answer this, and that is how far along is Navi from well, release. Unfortunately, your guess is as good as mine. Um, in other words, how close is it to completion? Because Raja obviously was instrumental in that. Um, I think at this point, Navi is probably to the point where they've got a pretty damn good inkling of where they're going to be going. The initial, you know, design is probably finished, and they're probably just testing it and probably putting the final touches on the basic design. But... You might recall that KB8G series will have an integrated Radeon graphics chip. Specifically, this is going to be based upon Vega. And I still will be doing a more in-depth analysis on how this works as more information pops up. But, according to one website, WCCF Tech, I have no idea how reliable their sources are. But I've had multiple people asking my opinions on this. So, you've got it. Basically, we're going to be getting it. Um, they're reporting that, according to their sources, Raja Kodori will be, indeed, going to a different company. Intel. Now, you could certainly read between the lines that it would make some sense, because Intel are not happy with NVIDIA. That's just, uh, you, know, you know the story as well as I do, so I'm, well, most of you do. If not, you can just do a Google. But there's a reason that AMD... Are teaming up with Intel and it's not because AMD and Intel are bestest buddies and they want to go skipping down the street together instead it's because AMD obviously want money and they also want to become very su uh, successful in the compute scenario uh, as a whole and when it comes to Intel they are also gunning for Nvidia which actually I'm not saying Nvidia are in trouble here because they are they're, they're, ga they're, just, they're just gargantuan. It's almost like saying electric cars at this point in Tesla. Maybe not quite that bad, but you kind of get the idea. They are synonymous. And when it comes to uh, NVIDIA, they've got deep learning pretty much sewn up uh, when it comes to CUDA, when it comes to the whole Tensor architecture as well. They're really starting to push that with the Tensor cores, with the next generation Volters. It's, it's going to be very interesting. So... According to WCCF, most of this comes down to, well, pushing the Nirvana chip and the whole competitive nature against NVIDIA. And I do suspect that AMD, um, having a lot of uh, intimate relationships in the future with Intel, could certainly perhaps not be too bothered by all of this. Now, I guess it depends. Uh, I'm going to assume that there are some anti-competitive stuff, and obviously Raja can't provide certain information. You'd assume he's going to have like NDAs up the wazoo. Um, so I don't think this is going to be like tomorrow Raja, or sorry, tomorrow rumors of an Intel dedicated graphics chip appear. Instead, I think there's a if this is true, and I don't know if it is. These are their sources who they're saying they trust. I don't know. Um, it's basically I'm throwing them under the bus is pretty much what I'm saying if this is not accurate. But according to them, um, Rajar's going to Intel. If that's true, it's possible there's going to be a couple of reasons why this is okay with AMD. The first is it might be to help transition 
a deeper relationship between Intel and AMD when it comes to graphics technology. This would make an awful lot of sense. I did say in my original video when it came to discussing you know, their relationship, the two companies' relationship working together with this chip, it's probable it's the first of several steps of several products. And inevitably, the server market is a market that they probably go, both want to tackle together. And basically rehashing my same point here, if you're AMD, you don't care necessarily that someone's not buying your Epic processors as much if they're buying your discrete graphics card. So if they have to sell a solution which is utilizing an AMD GPU, but an Intel CPU, well, by golly gosh, that's fine with AMD. At least they're getting some money, right? In fact, if you were to do some Googling on AMD's, I'm sorry, Intel's Nirvana chip, um, it is obviously very much propositioned and designed to take on NVIDIA. And in many ways, the pra parallel processing technology, which is in there, is very similar, at least, you know, from a kind of overview way of a standard GPU, parallel processing, essentially. And of course, also leverages HPM2. So once again, Raja Kodori having such insight into all of this certainly does make some level of sense. That's if all of this is true. What is true in this story, however, is Raj Akadori is leaving uh, AMD. So if he is indeed going to Intel, well, I wish him luck. Do I think AMD are going to be suffering from this? No, not really. Um, I think at this point their roadmap is pretty much fine. Lisa Su and others can take up the slack in the short-term RTG. One thing it could be as well, which has helped to push his decision, is that... Uh, RTG, Radeon Technologies Group, has had some of its autonomy uh, ebbed away over the past several weeks, and we reported that just recently. So it's possible that he's decided, hey, you know what, um, I feel that I've got the road back in place, they're kind of set for the next couple of generation of graphics cards, uh, I feel that, you know, I need to maybe slightly change my responsibilities and perhaps... You know, at Intel, I can almost feel like I'm pioneering again. That might be the way he's looking at this. Or it might be something entirely different. Like, it could be Bob um, happens to keep stealing his sandwiches, you know, on his lunchbox that says Raja Kodori on it. I don't know. No one ultimately knows. Some people are going to say he's going to be ousted. Other people are saying he just wants to leave because perhaps he just wants to move to New Horizons. Sorry, that was terrible. And others could just say that he just feels like, at this point in his career, it's just the natural progression. Either way, I wish Raja Kadori himself, um, which I very much doubt he's listening to this, but if he is, I very much wish him the absolute best. Uh, obviously, I also wish the same for AMD and, well, Intel themselves. Fantastic. And hopefully, and perhaps this is the most paramount thing of all, if this is happening, if he is going to Intel, perhaps it will push NVIDIA, perhaps it will push AMD, perhaps it will push Intel to maybe all release better products. And you know what? For me and you, who are customers, that is not a bad thing. With all the blood said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.